Hello everyone, this is Kishore Chaudhary again back with some uh, new video tutorials. So it's been a while uh, where I stopped uh, posting these video tutorials, uh, maybe because of the work pressure. So I uh, thought of uh, coming back with the tutorials again. Um, so let me introduce again myself, it's uh, Kishore Chaudhary, that's my name. And uh, I'm a C Sharp founder MVP and along with that I'm working as a developer evangelist in a company called Codesizzler. So uh, speaking about uh, my work experience, like I'll be working a lot with uh, technical consultancy where uh, I'll be going to a lot of corporates to provide uh, technical training for uh, people who work in there. So uh, coming to the topic of the day, today I'm going to discuss about uh, the web app service in Microsoft Azure. So uh, the session is going to be a hands-on one. So uh, the topics that are going to be discussed in that web app may be the creation of a web app service and along with that the understanding of the web app service plans and also hosting the website so these three things are going to be discussed that too in a hands-on way so uh, for proceeding further make sure that you have uh, an Azure account with a valid subscription so that you can work with the hands-on and if suppose you don't have one just try creating either a free trial account or uh, try going with something called uh, Visual Studio Dave Essential so you can find it in uh, Azure portal or if you, if you, even if you uh, google it you will be able to find it now uh, without wasting any time let me jump into the hands-on because uh, that is what I love most so that is the reason why uh, I am not presenting anything more than this so pretty simple there are going to be three different uh, things maybe first one will be creation of your web app service and uh, while creating the service itself we will be going through the app service plan always I mean alone and at last we will try to host a website into the uh, web app which we have created now uh, jumping back into this uh, virtual machine so I am working inside a virtual machine so that uh, it will be pretty easy for me because uh, this is a VM which I have configured for my personal use now uh, let me start this so this is what we generally do so the first thing is going to be like uh, portal.azure.com so uh, this is uh, the URL through which you can uh, jump into your Azure portal so um, I'm saying this for the people who might see this video for the first time or who might be a uh, very newbie for uh, Azure Azure things so uh, it's portal.azure.com and if you don't have an account you will be able to sign in but still you will not be having any subscription so make sure that you create one account if you don't have one so that is a free trial or any visual studio developer essential or something so uh, google it as portal.azure.com and this will take you into the portal and uh, as usual you need to sign in with your account so let me sign in with mine and I told so we are going to work with the web app service which means like uh, right from scratch that is uh, the point where we have to create our app service and how to work with the app service plan all those things will be discussed now this is your Azure portal and this is what we call as a dashboard so the resources that you create all those things will be coming in here and there is something called uh, notification bar in here in that you can see you will be able to find different notifications for your different app services this is what your uh, so this is what your Azure portal is now uh, let us try creating our app service in here so in general in general when you work with an Azure the first thing is like when you want to create a resource you have to click on this new option so now click on this new and go to your uh, web plus mobile and in there you can see something called web app so this is what we have to create now so click on this go to new choose web plus mobile and a web app and uh, you can see something called app name so uh, this is what the DN is going to be so you can see that is there is something called azure websites dot net which means like whatever the name you given here for your application maybe a web app that will actually become a DNS for you so uh, from this you can understand the name which you are going to give now it must be an unique one so let us say like uh, let me give it as Azure web app I think uh, this see you can see this so this one is a familiar one and uh, someone who have already used it so I'm I'm not supposed to use it now so uh, this is what I was coming to say this is going to act as a DNS so you must give an unique name which is not going to be used anywhere so that it will act as a DNS for your web app maybe in which you host your website uh, let me name it as a uh, Code Sizzler web app so this will be available yeah this is so now I will be getting a DNS like Code Sizzler web app dot Azure websites dot net so that will be the DNS and again this is going to be in the name of my web app as well 
now coming to the next one that is the subscription this is nothing but uh, the plan which you make use of so you, you can take your uh, mobile service as an example today people use a lot of uh, offers maybe in the form of tariffs or network plans so uh, just think of the scenario where you recharge for your mobile at mobile for uh, internet package or maybe the calls so you'll be recharging somewhere around maybe 399 or 499 or 599 based on your usage and you will be getting some data maybe 1 gb per day or 2 gb per day for a specific amount of time so the same thing in here but the difference is going to be like uh, the the credits so you can see in my notification you can see that so i have something like uh, 5831 in indian rupees and this is what my credit is and what happens is like i need to credit the amount into my uh, subscription so that whatever the resource i consume that amount will get reduced based on the consumed resource so this is how this plan works and this doesn't have any expiry date if suppose you are going with something called pay as you go which is a subscription where uh, you will be paying for the resources which you make use of in that case you will you will be charged on the resources which you use and there you will not be having any expiry so that's what your uh, subscription is all about so uh, well if you are going with something called uh, azure free trial then you will be having a free trial subscription maybe with the different name like not like this one or if you are going with uh, dev essential that is visual studio developer essential then you will be having something like this so i'm trying to choose this one so that uh, you can work with the same so i'm choosing visual studio developer essentials and next to this you have something called resource group so uh, i can relate this with the real time example like uh, there is uh, let us consider your pc you might have uh, movies in your pc you might have songs in your pc even you might have uh, games or softwares or even some project related data in that scenario you will be creating different folders and segregating all those resources in separate folders so that you can easily access them you can easily easily allocate them and you can easily segregate so that it will be easy for you to manage so same way azure provides you with something called resource groups so these resource groups are nothing but a kind of folders in which you will be able to create your own resources and uh, segregate them so that it will be easy for you to access so that's what your resource group is now in general if suppose you are working for the new time you will be getting like a uh, create a new resource group because if you go to this use existing option under that you will be shown with uh, already created resource groups since i don't have any resource group with this specific subscription i'm not getting any one so if i just click on this create new i have to give a name and by default it will be taking the name of your web app but you can rename it so uh, i'm naming as new rg and it works so this is going to be the name of the folder or the resource group which i going to create and next to this there is something called os so speaking about microsoft azure uh, today microsoft is providing uh, support for all the operating systems like it is not fixed only with the windows but it is providing a support even for the open source so uh, you can create your web apps even with the windows or even with the linux i am working with windows right now so i am choosing windows and this this is the basic setup which you have to do with and next to this you have something like app service plan so click on this and this is going to be the plan which will be deciding like in which location your web app is going to get created at what cost it is going to be and what are the features that web app service is going to have so that is what going to be fixed by this app service plan now there is an option called create new and you can see by default a plan will get created for you if suppose you don't you don't configure it by yourself right so i don't have to click on this and do create all these things i can just click on okay and it will automatically i mean automatically get created but the thing is i want to explain you the app service plan so let us go to this create new and you can see uh, you uh, your app service plan it will actually require a name so let me name it my service plan just i'm giving some some name it's up to you and there is something called location this is what which is going to decide at which location your uh, web app service has to be created so uh, uh, you know right cloud works with something called data centers so uh, there will be different set of data centers in which the resources which you configure will be hosted same way in the place of this location 
you you can choose any any resource i mean any data center which you want so let us assume like uh, actually i am now in the south india so uh, the nearest data center for me will be south india which means if i choose the south india as my location my web app service is going to be get created in a location called south india which means the data center which is in south india and you can assume it so uh, the data center is going to be near to me and it will be little easy for me to access so that there will be no latency so this is how you have to decide like which data center is going to be useful for you so it doesn't mean that like uh, since i am in south india and if i choose some data center somewhere in southeast asia i will not be able to access it no the thing is the data center which is near to you it will be providing uh, uh, give me a second remind me later so uh, coming to this the data center which is nearby you it will it will decide like uh, which which one you can choose so uh, it doesn't matter whether where it is or where you are from the thing is the latency so uh, the data center that is nearby you it will it will be responding very fast for you i mean fast to you whereas the data center that is far away from you it might request little bit slower and it doesn't mean that the latency will be in uh, seconds maybe they will be in milliseconds so that is what your uh, location is you can choose any location you want based on uh, the requirement that is given by the client or based on the need that you have so it depends it depends with uh, the scenario which you work in and next to that there is something called pricing tier this is what which is going to decide the resources the services that are available in your app and along with that the features that are being that is going to be provided for you so uh, let me make it a full screen and let us come right from the scratch so what uh, you can see something called uh, f1 shared in here which is nothing but a free service so the cost of the service is going to be 0 rupees per month which means you can host your website at a free of cost and in here you will be getting uh, 1 gb of storage space which means your website can be up to 1 gb of size and the infrastructure is going to be shared which means your web app service is going to be created in maybe in uh, any one cloud space that's in the azure data center but it's some 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 space of 1 gb and there you are not going to be uh, having any dedicated virtual machine for your web app which means there will be multiple users who will be hosting their website along with you that's what your uh, f1 free shared infrastructure is and next to that you have something called d1 shared and you can see the cost of this one is where somewhere around six six hundred and sixty eight rupees and seventy nine pies, and you can see an extra feature in this something like custom domain. So what happens is like when you try to create an app service, it will be you can see here. So this is going to be my DNS that is code sizzler web app dot azure websites dot net. So what happens is like when I create one using the free trial or this free one there I will be getting something like codesizzler.azurewebsites.net but but I don't want to have something like that so I want to have like codesizzlerwebapp.com in that scenario I can add a custom domain but to add that custom domain I should be using a pricing tier which is of D1 standard which means I can add a custom domain for this that's what your uh, D1 standard is all about and this is again going to be in a shared infrastructure which means we will not be able to configure any other uh, maybe like you don't will not be having any specific virtual machine which has been dedicatedly given for you so that's your D1 standard coming back to this basic B1 here this is going to be a dedicated virtual machine for your website not only for your no it means like your web app so you are going to host your website in your web app so that's fine so it means like if i say web app or website it's common so here you will be having a dedicated virtual machine for your web app now you can see in there there you have one core and along with that you will be provided with some 1.75 gb of ram and also with uh, 10 gb of storage and a custom domain so uh, you can see the difference here it's 1 GB here it's 10 GB and it's going to be a dedicated virtual machine for you and along with that you can see something called SSL that is your secured socket layer certificates so you can make your uh, website more secure one either by writing your own certificates or purchasing certificates and importing them in here and next to that you can see something like up to three instances so uh, which means you will be able to host your uh, virtual machine with three different instances which means like in azure data centers uh, 
all the resources will be allocated in racks and there whenever you configure a virtual machine or any kind of service it will be it will be configured somewhere in some some rack and you will be able to make use of it so same way in here the virtual machine which is going to be created for your web app service it is going to be spanned up on three different hardware resources so that it i mean those hardware resources will be also in the form of virtual machines so what happens is like uh, there will be three different virtual machines upon which your specifically dedicated vm will be hosted so that is what your up to three instances mean and this is what your b1 basic is and next to this b2 basic again it's doubling with the resources which is available in b1 basic and the cost is again double so again b3 basic it will be double than b2 basic and everything is going to be the same with my i mean uh, with resources that are up uh, with some higher configuration and if you go up we have something called standard we have something called premium and again uh, when compared to this basic and standard you have something like daily backup deployment slots and traffic manager so these deployment slots are uh, they are for uh, working parallelly at uh, your live website and with the website which is under development so uh, let us discuss about this web apps uh, deployment slots in the later part so uh, let me go with this uh, traffic manager orders it's like a, a service which will be helping you to route the request from um, different source to different destinations and that is a part of this one and that feature will be provided for you with the standard tier and again uh, when you go for a premium one you will be able to go with the daily backup of 50 times a day whereas with the standard one you can do only one backup a day and along with that uh, you will be having somewhere around 20 slots so that is how the difference will be and again the cost is going to be different here the cost is pretty much higher when compared to the standard one and again if you go little more up you have premium one and there uh, your disk will be different your uh, cpu things will be different and i can speak about this isolated one here you can see everything is going to be same but number of instances it's somewhere around 100 and you can even increase it and you have something like a uh, private app access which means like you can configure an active directory so that uh, only specific person can access it and all those things so it's come it is coming in your azure active directory which is also being going to be discussed in the later parts maybe in the forthcoming videos and there is something like app service environment single tenant system so you can go with the app service which is going to be configured only for uh, your specific plan that too in a single tenant system in a sense it is going to be configured only for you so maybe a custom app service so uh, even i didn't work with an isolated one because it is too much way costly for me to work with and i i have not got any any requirement for me to work with this but still let me try it one day and i'll even explain it later on and again so this is going to be the new one which i don't know but yeah i will explain some other day and yes vnet yeah this feature has been given an extra one so in this isolated one you can even uh, run your web app servers in a virtual network so uh, if you are not familiar with this one okay that's fine later on i will again go with this virtual network topic as well but uh, to make it simple uh, so this vnet uh, you can even run your uh, isolated web app service upon a specific network which you reserve and create for yourself so your private network now for this and so on i want you to go with the standard s1 service so that uh, in my forthcoming videos you can again continue with the same thing so let us create the standard s1 and select so that's all for my app service plan i'll just click on ok and uh, next to this you have something like application insights so this is for uh, having a graphical view about your web app service like how it responds to the request how it actually actually response on how the requests have been accepted and how they are uh, pro they became error and how they have been uh, successfully given a response on all these things can be seen in an uh, insight with the help of a graphic graphical picture so i don't want it now i'm just turning it off and there is an option called pin to dashboard if i enable it the resource which i'm going to create right now it will be displayed in here so that's what your pin to dashboard is all about and finally create now what happens is like the the credentials which I have been set and the settings which I have been given and the configurations that I have made all these things will be taken and it will be validated and if everything is fine then my deployments will start now you can see in here my deployment has started and uh, what happens is like a web app service will get created for me so once this web app service has been created you can see uh, you can remember right I have named my app service like uh, code sizzler web app 
dot azure websites dot net which means I will be owning the domain named codeswizzlerwebapp dot azure web, azure websites dot net and inside that I will be having an empty or a sample website not an empty one by default uh, azure will provide you a sample website in that sample website uh, there will be a uh, sample one so we will see that so now this is over my deployment has been succeeded this is called your overview page so here you can see your resource group name is something like new rg and your status of your web it's running its location is south india its subscription is visual studio developer essentials the following is the id of that subscription then the following is the url if i click on this url you can see it is taking me to the following url and here you can see my web app it's a sample which has been given by microsoft itself so this is going to be my web app sample and coming back to the dashboard here you can see there is something like username of my FTP and my host name and all those things so you can see the operating system again it is going to be Windows Server 2016 and can you remember I have chosen something like S1 standard which means uh, I will be having a dedicated virtual machine for me and that is the reason why I got an operating system here so now uh, we have created our own web app service and you can see it's been hosted and it's actually running with the sample website in it now this is done the next step is like hosting the website so there are multiple ways in which you can host a website you can use your FTP user you can use your visual studio you can use your uh, continuous deployment which is nothing but your github or OneDrive or other resources even you can uh, use your uh, something like kudu service so there are different options for you you can use your filezilla also so now we can go with uh, a technique in which you don't want any third party tools or any other software which has been given even by the microsoft so you can uh, make use of this ftp so that you can directly host your website right from your pc just using your uh, normal machine without any extra softwares so now for that there is something like get published profile in here if you click on it see you can see something getting downloaded it's your code is your publisher settings if you open it inside that uh, you can see a lot of uh, set of tags so there uh, uh, from the bottom in the fourth line you can see now something like publisher URL and in that you can see up to root so this one this is going to be the URL for you to access your web app so that you can uh, you can host your website inside it now what you have to do is in that specific piece of code copy the code which is inside I mean copy the path which is inside this uh, URL that is your publisher URL inside that there will be some path inside the double quote copy the following and then open any window in your PC maybe or this PC or any window and here at the top you can see a path this is nothing but your file explorer in that place just paste that URL so you're getting it in that place paste your URL and hit on enter you will be getting something like this so you need to enter the username and password for username come back to the document next to that path which you copied you have something like FTP passive mode and uh, next to that is username so copy that username from there and after copying it come back to your portal I mean come back to that window where you are and paste it in there and now you need the password again for password come back to that uh, same document which you copied in the place of that user PWD just copy the password alone which is in your uh, inside your double quotes copy the same come back to your portal I mean the window paste it in there and click on this logon now you can see you are logged in into a window which actually consists of something like a hosting start.html the reason you are getting this one is like when you when you click on the following URL of your web app you are actually getting a sample one in here and the reason you got the sample is because of the following file which has been given by default by Microsoft so this is making you to see the following web app in here and let me show you a setting here actually uh, you can see if I delete the following thing in here 
I will not be getting anything like this but before that uh, let me go to your setting and uh, show you something in here go back to your uh, web app service which you have created now and in that if you scroll down you can see something like app settings if you click on that app settings you can see a lot of options where you can configure on this in that if you scroll down you will be able to see something like default documents in those things you can see something like default.htm, default.html, default.aspx all those things so uh, you know right every website will have a home page now imagine a scenario if you are having a website and it is having index.html or maybe kishore.html now how you are going to define like this is going to my this is going to be my home page this page is going to be my home page so there if you give any name in the following place maybe kishore.html or whatever the name that you want to give and save it what happens is like that name will be considered and the thing is this is going to be an order if suppose you can see there is something called uh, hosting start.html in your root folder which is nothing but the website which you are actually working with now you can come back and see here at the last you have something like hosting start.html which means I have already given this name in here I mean by default it is there and that is the reason why when I search for the following URL that is that code is webapp.azure webapp website is .net. when I search for the following URL I am getting the following page now let us uh, do small change in here I mean uh, let us try hosting the web, our own website first and then let us try making other changes for that uh, let us create one new document I mean a new notepad file I'm um, just creating one and in that notepad file I'm hosting my website so my just I'm giving a small name my first website I just named it and now I'm just saving it with I mean saving it in the form of an HTML file that is uh, save as index.html so I'm naming it as index.html it's done now I will copy the same file in here so what I did is like I just created one file in the notepad and uh, I just wrote something in there maybe the first website or something and I saved it as index.html and I'm just copying it and I'm pasting it in here in the root folder so you can note it it's in the root folder now you can see there are two different files in here that is one is index.html and another one is your hosting start.html if I come back to this portal and uh, if I go back to the settings you can see here your hosting start.html is at the last whereas your index.html it is it is in in front of that hosting start.html which means this is actually having the first priority sorry this one that is index.html is having the first priority whereas your hosting start.html is having the second priority now if I go back the following URL and if I refresh it I'm getting like my first website which means here this is saying that index.html have to be considered first if suppose there are two different files with the available names that are given in here or if suppose you want some other thing to come first then you can rename it in here and it will reflect back in here now let me try deleting this index.html and if I go back and if I refresh the following thing in here I'm getting back the old one and again let me go and delete the same hosting start.html now and if I come back and if I refresh the following page you can see you don't have permission to view the directory or page which means there is nothing in here again uh, let me go back to the root again let me paste that index.html again so again index.html has been posted and if I refresh my website is back this is how you can uh, host your website into the Azure web app services using this FTP so uh, that's all for the day let me come back to the presentation so uh, we discussed this web app servers and we discussed our app service plan and we have also hosted the web app that is using an FTP and in forthcoming videos let us see how to host using your github how to host your uh, website using the visual studio using the kudu console and all possible ways and maybe the following series will be continuing with the web apps and the different features that can be worked with the web apps so that's all for today 
let me come back to the end slide so uh, it's kishore choudhury again and uh, i'm a c shop corner mvp working as a developer evangelist in a company called coach isler so the following is my uh, twitter id you can uh, follow me in there and you can write your query so that i can easily reply back to you and this is my mail id and uh, the chol so uh, i suppose you have any doubts feel free to write your mails or feel free to write out the commands in the below given command box so that i can easily reply back to you so thank you for the things and if suppose you need to give any feedback you can even write your feedbacks to me that's all for the day have uh, a nice time and thanks for the watching thanks for watching the video thank you